In this video, I wanna to talk to you about why you're probably not closing as many sales as you hope you are. Now, there's a lot of components, components to closing deals, right? You have the actual offer itself, price point, the prospect, the process they went through. So I actually think there's five P's in, in, that have to happen and be in alignment prior to the sale. So the first is the promotion for the right prospect at the right price for the right product following the right process, right? Those are the five P's that I think through when I'm looking at an entire sales pipeline. But what I wanna talk about specifically today is why even if you're following all those things correctly and you're getting on the phone and you have a script that you know works or your team has a script that you, you wrote out because you know it works, right? If they're not closing, then it means that they may be saying the right things, but they may be saying it the wrong way. And so there's two components to saying the right things the right way, all right? So one is tone and the second is, um, is cadence, right, is emphasis. And so I wanna give you an example of both of those things. So for example, if I were to um, give you a script like, you know, Jerry Seinfeld's uh, comedy script, and you were to get on stage and you were to try and deliver that, right, the tone, the pauses that you would have would not be the same as his, right? His intonations would be different than yours are. And so as a result, he would be funny and you would not be. And you'd be wondering like, well, this worked for Jerry. Why is it not working for me? And so just like that, you may be looking at your team and wondering like, well, this works for me. Why is it not working for them? And you're looking and they're saying the words, but you're like, why is this not working? It's because they're saying them the wrong way. And so let me illustrate this in a different way. So if I were to say my own name, so if Layla, my wife calls me and she says, Alex, right? Or Alex or Alex, right? All three of those are just my name, right? Said differently, have different meanings. I'll give you another example. I got this from Jason Flatland. I love this. I didn't say he hit his wife. 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 I didn't say he hit his wife, right? And so each of those sentences has different meaning, right? Because of the emphasis that we put on the words. And so just like both, so one is you have the tone that you're using, the pauses where you put emphasis, right? And then you have how you're saying the words. And so what happens is you have somebody who's reading a script, but they aren't reading it the right way. There's two ways to fix this, right? One of them is to become a master salesman, right? And learn how to control your tone, right? Learn when to lower your voice so that what you're saying shows the prospect that it's really important, right? So I'm slowing down what I'm saying, I'm lowering my tone so that you know that you need to pay attention to what I'm saying. Whereas if I'm really excited, I'm talking about all this stuff, it's really exciting, and we're like, we're all, we're all fast paced, we're all up here, right? Then that's gonna, it's gonna communicate something different, even if we're both saying the same words. And so one of those things happens from repetition, right? You learn, you start to learn this stuff because you're like, man, I nailed that sale, what did I do right? And so one of my side note recommendations for everyone is, everyone here, hopefully, has been on a hot streak at some point. Like there's some days you get on the phone and you're like, man, I could just close anyone right now. When you are hot, those are the videos you should watch. That's the game tape footage that you should go over and over and over again. Like in the be beginning, you might not have that. You have to watch other people's stuff. But when you are hot, you say things differently. You pause at different points. And it's those micro nuances that create master salesmen. And the true master salesman, right? The difference between a 250 batter and a 300 batter, right? For a baseball analogy, it's like one, one hit every two or three games, right? It's not a huge difference. But that's the difference between a master salesman and a poor sa and a, an average salesman is that great salesmen never get cold. They are always on a hot streak because they know how to recreate success. And it's because they know how to say the things the right way for the right prospect. And so, to wrap this up for you, if you have your sales team, right, the easiest tactic is to get them to A, watch the footage of themselves when they were hot. And if they haven't, watch other people who were hot uh, and what they were saying at that point because there are minor ways and tonality and shifts and pauses that you will do when you are assuming the clothes the right way, when you're projecting the confidence, when you have the conviction that communicates differently. Let me give you a, a fun tidbit that I found. Like we always close the highest percentage on our, on our on our deals when we had people finishing our program, right? Because on the days that we would finish our cohorts, our groups of clients, we'd have all these success stories that would go again after another, after another, after another. We'd do all these interviews on one day. And so my sales team would watch this happen and then they would get on the phones and they would be so convicted about what they were selling. And so this leads into the two ways that you can fix this, right? So number one is that you become a master salesman. You become a master salesman through repetition and through studying game tape footage, which is the first thing I said. The second way and the faster way of doing this is to believe in what you sell. This is hard, I'll be real with you. 
right? This is, this is hard for a lot of people, especially if you're a business owner, because you know all the problems in your business. There are always going to be problems and those aren't going to go away. And so one of the things that I have, I have hacked in my own mind is, is asking two other questions, which is, I will never have a perfect product and I'll tell you that right now, but I can have perfect intentions. Right? And so that is something that you can delineate for yourself, number one. And you know your intentions. So if your intentions aren't perfect, then you can fix those and you can have perfect intentions. Right? But your product will never be perfect, it's gonna always improve. Right? The second thing in terms of improving it is knowing that the prospect will be better served working with you than with anyone else. And so that is something that I have, I have looked at. And so this is easier for somebody who's getting into a marketplace and you can see the other competitors that are there. You may not be perfect, but you can believe that you are the absolute best shot that this person has to be successful. And this is especially true if you have some sort of education or training type business where someone is required to do something. So like if you were, if you're helping someone with life coaching, you're helping someone with weight loss, you're helping someone with, with their business. Like these are all skills that they have to develop. You cannot eat the food for someone. You cannot do the push-ups for someone. You cannot hop on the sales call for them. They have to learn the skill, which means that you can provide something, but they also have to come the other half the, half the distance, right? And so the way to continue to have that conviction is one, recognize your intentions. If you can fix your intentions to know that your intentions are perfect, then that is gonna be a huge step forward that you'll have over your competition because then it will force you, it will cause you to say the things the right way because people can feel conviction. They can feel the subtle nuances of how you communicate and they will choose to believe you not based on what you say, but on how you say it. And the second way is by making sure that your product is the best and that it is the best shot that this person has. You can't say, I guarantee that you're going to lose weight. I can't say I'll guarantee that you're going to make more money because you can't because you can't control the variables, but you can guarantee that you will be the best shot that this person has at being successful. And so for me, cracking that code uh, mentally helped me a lot, especially in, in weight loss sales when I was starting out, right? Because I would have someone in and I knew the stats. I knew that in six months, uh, you know, half the people who were signing up weren't going to be at the gym. I knew that. Right. But the thing is, is I can't look at someone and say like, well, you know what, maybe, maybe they shouldn't sign up because I mean, half the people aren't going to, aren't going to show up, you know, within six months. But instead I was able to shift. And this was something that I had to learn that I'm still the best shot this person has at getting where they want to go. Right. They're still going to have to do stuff on their part, but I know with conviction that my intentions are perfect and that I am the best shot they have at getting where they want to go. And that is the conviction that I can stand on, that I can look someone in the eyes through their soul and tell them that I were the best shot for them to be successful. And that is how you can change the way you speak. So you can speak with conviction to a prospect. And that is what I found. And so hopefully you find this valuable. If you are not selling or your team is not selling the way you want it, it is not necessarily because the words you are saying, sure. It's all the, the other things that I said, the promotion, the offer that you're running, right? The, the process that you're taking them through the price that you're selling it. Uh, who you are selling to, the prospect themselves, all of those things are gonna be things that are gonna weigh into whether or not it's successful. But once you are actually on the phone with the person, fundamentally a sale is simply a transfer of belief. And if you do not believe, then you cannot transfer that belief. And the way that you communicate belief is not in what you say, but how you say it. And so hopefully that was valuable for you. If you like this stuff, click subscribe. My name is Alex Ramosi. I have a portfolio of companies that does $85 million a year in revenue. Hope you find value in this. Click subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.